Middleweight bout, Bruno Fajeda coming in at minus 155 against Nursultan Ruzaboyev. Plus 155 for Nursultan. Over under one and a half rounds, plus 180 for the over, minus 180 for the under. So they're expecting some violence in this one. The undefeated Bruno Fajeda in his debut went in and uh, just destroyed RoboCop. And Nursultan making his debut here. You see a lot of experience as far as the record goes, 5-0 in his last five. Um, but if you look a little bit more into like who he's fighting, uh, I mean, they, they have like a lot of fights on their record, uh, or at least a, as of somewhat recent. There's not a lot of tape out there to look at for Nersultan. Um, but, yeah, he, he's, he's going to be a problem when he goes. He's usually a 170-year. He's coming in here again on short notice to take on Fajeda at 185, but he's 6'4", so, I mean, he's got a, quite the frame, and uh, he's got 1.3 million Instagram followers, so he's got a lot of people supporting him, uh, <laughs> and I, I think he could pose some problems for Fajeda, considering Fajeda's 5'10 at, at 185, but the power in that left hand from him is uh, put out Robocop like flat, flat dead and uh that's that's kind of a tough thing to do so if he can find the chin of nursultan it might uh not take too long for him to do that and it might he might not be able to get up from it but i'm looking at this one like that that line is a, a little tough to like it's tough to take chalk on fajeda if i'm being honest because the power is there uh, the submissions are somewhat there but at 5'10", at 185, like eventually you're going to run into problems where you can't just rely on that one-shot sh power. And at 6'4", it might be tough to get on the inside there and uh, and find it because RoboCop is, is going to walk you down and he's going to be able to... You're going to find the pocket with RoboCop. That's just what he does. And Fajeda found it. So might be a little bit tougher against a 6'4 guy in Nurselton. What are you thinking? Yeah, it's tough. Um this this uh Ruzabayev, you look at his record man it looks padded as well you you go back far enough he's fighting guys that are you know 500 who are 20 and 24 10 and 10 um so he's not really fighting any killers he has a ton of wins on his record and if you look man 20 of those wins are by submission 12 by knockout and he's got 38 wins so he's a finisher for sure and being six foot four at this weight class i, I think where well, he's usually at 170 but um, being six foot four in those two, you know, welterweight, middleweight plays into his advantage, especially when he gets on the ground. You can tell he uses those limbs, gets a lot of Kimuras and a lot of arm bars and, and different submissions like that. So he's not just your guillotine rear naked choke guy. Like he's a talented grappler on the ground. Uh, Bruno Fajeda against Robocop. Robocop was six, three. This dude's six, four. Uh, this dude's definitely longer though. If you look at him, than then. Uh, Robocop. Robocop's, you know, 6'3 and just kind of put together. He doesn't have super long limbs or anything. He's just a big muscle head and uh, just came forward with his hands down at the wrong time and got clipped. So I do think Bruno Fajeda can find the chin here. I know the the height difference and the reach difference like seems like a lot, but the way he fights, the aggressiveness, he just closes that distance really fast. He's like not scared to get hit to give a big shot. And I think he's going to have to being five foot 10, like you mentioned, you, you know, relying on that one shot when you're five ten at, at the 185 pound weight class is going to be tough as you start fighting better and better competition. But right now I think he still will find the chin of these guys. Um, Ruzabayev, if he does win, I think it is by submission. I, I think just, you know, being the longer guy, if this fight goes to the ground, maybe he gets a body triangle and just works his way into a submission, but I'm still leaning Bruno here. I think he does have that, you know, out of this world power in his hands that's just going to be able to put anybody out he fights and if he finds the chin he'll just he'll do just that so i think he gets it done here especially on short notice against ruzabayev doesn't have a lot of time to prepare for for fajeda so yeah give me bruno here i think he gets it done i'm gonna go the other way Whew. um not like a confident play but i just look at it like for one ruzabayev's head looks freaking huge compared to his frame like <laughs> if he gets hit in the head by Ferreira, uh it's a pretty big head so i think he could absorb some stuff but the the grappling he, he loves that kimura 
Um, and he uses it a lot to sweep. If you watch uh, the tape, like if he's on bottom, they use that Kamara to, to sweep and, and get a reverse. But yeah, I don't know, just something about uh, Nurseltan. He trains at a good camp in uh, in Philadelphia, and uh, the submissions are already there. And then he's got a guy like Sean Brady uh, that he trains with, and I think that's probably the path to victory for him. Long, long limbs. Um, maybe a club and sub type thing, but even at six foot four, if he can stay at range, it's going to be probably going to be frustrating for Ferreira uh, to try to find anything. So, yeah, I'll go with Nurse and Tom. The one thing that the one thing that bothers me though is like if he's training at that camp and he's thirty four and eight, like why is he not in the UFC yet? Why? How come they didn't have him in here? You know, five years ago, it just something screams that padded record and uh, you know. Maybe he's not quite UFC level. I, I just got to be a reason he's not in the UFC yet at 34 and 8. How about this, though? How about this? Uh, Bruno Ferreira has never been to a third round, and he's never really been past 12 seconds or a minute in this, <laughs> into the second round. So how is his cardio? True. We don't Very know. true. We do not know. Especially um, against a grappler, too. Maybe he just zaps the, the power out of him. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. I mean, undefeated, you can't really go wrong with an undefeated uh, fighter, but in this one, I, I, I'm i willing to take the dog shot on Nurse Latan, so I'll take and it. And all you people watching at home, too, you know, if you're uncomfortable betting this fight, just don't bet it, honestly. Yeah. I mean, wait yeah. and see what this dude looks like after this fight, and then go from there. You could even lie bet it after the first. Like, you go right. in there, and maybe, you know, Nurse Latan looks better than you thought, and it's maybe a close round, and you can still get him at plus money. Um, but you'll you'll probably know within the first minute or two, like if this guy's a fraud or not. So it's kind of like the Hussein Ashkabal fight. Like we kind of knew after the first round, like all right, this guy's not that good. <laughs> like, even though he's twenty three and oh, he's not that good. Uh, so you'll you'll get a good good look after the first round. 